We are going to continue with the midpoint of a line segment. You will find this on page 305 in the Namibia Ordinary Level Mathematics textbook Y equals MX plus C to success. Let's look at another example. Show that the points D, E, F are vertices of an isosceles triangle. Find the area of the triangle. Now it's always good to just make a sketch. Just take one centimeter. You don't need to do it on a graph paper. You may not use a graph to prove a statement, but it will help you to visualize the points and to just keep a little bit order in your sum. So first you're going to work out DE, which is square root 17, and you can fill it in then on your sketch. And then EF, which is square root 17 again, and then DF, which is square root 18. Okay, and then by doing this, you basically just can already see that this is an isosceles triangle because ED is equal to EF. That's therefore DEF is an isosceles triangle. Now, find the area. Now remember the area of a triangle is half base times height and the height must be perpendicular to the base. So I need this distance but first I need this point. Now because it's an isosceles triangle if you draw a line from E perpendicular there it will be exactly the height and it will cut, very important, this into two equal parts. So basically this point is going to be the midpoint. So I'm just going to first find the midpoint. So it's the, I add up the x values, I divide 2. I add up, add up the y values, I divide 2. And then as soon as I have my midpoint, I can go, there's my midpoint, and I just do the substitution, and I work out that distance, and as soon as I have the distance, I can start with my area formula, which is half base times height, which is half of df, which is square root 18, and the height, it's 12.5, and I just multiply it, and I get 7.5. Okay. Now, let's, you can stop the video and then you do try now 6. You can continue the video as soon as you are finished. Okay, let's start. Show that the points J, K and L, okay, I'm just going to write it first down, J, I'm just going to do, J, K and L. Okay, what is J? It's minus 1 and 2. What is k? It's 5 and 2. And what is l? It's 2 and 5. Okay. Then this is x1. I'm going to call this point 1, this point 2, this point 3. So this is x1, y1, x2, y2. Then this will be x3, y3. And I think it's also good if I just quickly make a sketch. Now, if I make a sketch, I think we're going to do it like this. Let's just take a ruler. Um, it's just going to be negative 1 and 2, so it's, I think the space is all right here. Um, it's just, it's no negative there, so I uh, just want to see, oh, okay, let's see if I can do it like this. It's going to fit. Okay, so let's start. Negative 1 and 2. 1, 2. And that's going to be J. And then K is 5. Oh, 1, 2, 3, 4. And I have to move it just a little bit to get that 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And 2. 1, 2. Okay, and then L, it's 2 and 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and it's L. And then I'm just going to take a ruler, take the ruler again, and I'm just going to combine the points. Okay, now I have my sketch. I may not use it. 
but it's just helping me to keep keep order and to visualize everything. Okay, now I start. Um, so if I want to show that it's isosceles, I have to work out the distance, like the previous videos of the line. So let's start with the first one, um, JK. Mm, just want to see. Okay, so basically it's always just the JK, the difference in X. plus the difference in y. So the difference in x, it's 5 minus negative 1 squared plus the difference in y, 2 minus 2 squared. And that's going to give me an answer of 5 plus 1 uh, so this is going to be 6 squared plus 0, and that's going to be 36. Square root of 36, which can also be 6. Okay, we will see if we're sim going to simplify it, um, because this is just a whole number. Okay, then um, KL, let's just do KL. Now again, it's just the difference in x. So now it's just going to be x3 minus x2 squared plus y3 minus y2 squared. If you start with the freeze, start there also with the freeze. And then I'm just going to substitute it. So uh, let's start x3, so it's 2 minus 5. plus y3, 5 minus 2, so 2 minus 5 is negative 3 squared plus, um, let's just quickly see, negative 3 squared plus 3 squared, and that's going to be 9 plus 9, which is the square root of 18. Okay, and then the next one, and I'm, I'm going to do the next one, just here. <clears throat> yeah, I think it's not necessary. I think we can even clean a little bit here. I think you have an idea of that sketch. <clears throat> so if I look here, I'm just going to say um, KL, I will take red, and it will JL. Okay, let's just write in what I already have. So I already have that JK is just 6, and I have that KL, KL is square root 18. Okay, so J, and that's going to be the difference, it's the doing it again, the difference in X, so it's JL, so it's going to be X3 minus X1 squared plus y3 minus y1 squared. Remember again, if you start with 3, start there also with 3. Then I'm just going to do it like this, <clears throat> and I'm just going to say um, 2 minus negative 1 squared plus 5 minus 2 squared. And that is again going to give me, because this becomes 2 plus 1, so it's going to be give you 3 squared plus another 3 squared, which will again give me 9 plus 9, which will again give me the square root of 18. And again, I'm going to ask, I'm going to say therefore, let's just say it here, therefore, KL equals JL, and I can say, and triangle JKL is an isosceles triangle. Okay, and then I'm just going to say, okay, so that is the proof, and now I start with B. I just have to move up for B. Let's start with B. 
find the perimeter and the area. No, the perimeter is not a problem because the perimeter is just side 1 plus side 2 plus side 3, which will just be, if I'm adding it all up, I'm just going to say, okay. So this is going to be um, 6 plus square root 18 plus square root 18. So basically, I'm just going to, let's just say square root 18 plus that 6, and that is going to give me 14.5, correct to free significant. We can just test again, square root 18 plus square root 18 plus that 6 is 14.5. And what will we call it? Just units. The area is a bit of more of a problem because if I work out the area, um, I first have to get this line. And I want to show you it's this line. So, and, and if it's isosceles there, then basically this will be cut in the middle. So that will be actually the midpoint. So let's just get the midpoint first. Now to get the midpoint, oh, I just have to change my pen. It's just going to be, I take the x values, I add it up, I divide 2, I take the y values, I add it up, oh sorry, I wrote x, y values, and I divide by 2. And that is going to give me the x values, okay, it's, it's good if I sometimes write it in, so I'm just going to quickly, just for myself, this point was negative 1 and 2, and then this point was, let's just write it there, um, it was 5 and 2. Now it's easy to see. Okay, so I'm just going to say, um, yeah, K was actually, yeah, no, this is correct. So I'm just going to say negative 1 plus 5 divide 2, and 2 plus 2 divide 2. And that is going to be 4 over 2, and 4 over 2, and that is going to be 2 and 2. That's going to be the midpoint. So that midpoint there is 2 and 2. And now, this is quite complicated, but it's not so difficult. Okay, now I'm going to, I'm busy doing one. Um, Oh, it was not necessary to work out the perimeter because I'm doing number one. But it doesn't matter, so this is optional. You don't have to now. Let's rather show you. This was optional. Okay. Okay, and the next one I'm asking that. So if it's two and two, now if I want the area, let's just move this away. So now I first must find um, in this case, it's going to be M, so I'm going to now find J, K, I just want to see L, this was L, so L, M, so let's just first find L, M. Oh, let's just redo that one. Okay, and now Lm, and I'm just going to write, it's the difference. Okay, let's just write L also here. What is L? 2 and 5. Okay, so in this case, it is the difference in X. So it's going to be 2 minus, I have the pin again, minus 2 square plus Um, 5 minus 2 square. And that is going to be, now this is going to be 0. Plus 3 square. Oh, 
this pen. I think it's because I'm here at the bottom. Three square, and that is going to be the square root of nine. And that is going to be three. And now the final, final, final step. If I want to find the area, so just going to say the area. equals half base times height and that's going to be a half and the base and in this case let's just see can you see the base again the base is six do you see and we work out that this one was three <coughs> So it's half, six times three. And the final answer, six times three, it's going to be 18, and then the half of that will be <coughs> nine, and whatever it will be, units square. So the final answer will be 9 units square. Okay, and that's how you do it.